Here there are some geometry things that are interesting. There are lots, I have five of the digits in these rows, and so I may choose to think about them. For instance, I have a one and a one coming here and a one here, and so there's a one that you can place there. And the center of this puzzle is actually made a symmetric kind of placement here that the seven and this, this seven and that seven cancel, and you can, can write those digits in. I'm not sure if that was on purpose or just uh, something that happened, but what, what's interesting in this puzzle is that there are lots of times where there's uh, communication from one box to another to another that eventually makes it work. And so let's, let's place the digits we can get sort of cheaply, like all those fours pop out real fast at the start. And then following up on that, uh, we can do something. Let me, I have, I have to find this again. For example, here I'm, I'm finally looking at the sixes and now I've run into my notes and because of that I can write, uh, I can propagate that progress forward quicker. That's a lesson that by now if, if you're using this or trying to use this kind of note system you should, you should see. What, what, what I've done here is I've written this note and now before I leave it behind I'm going to look at other places in the puzzle. For example, up here I'm going to see the six and this six comes over. And it also forces two sixes into this column. So oftentimes it's critical to isolate places where there's only one, uh, where it has to go into some row or column. And in, in this example, this middle box is where it has to be in the middle column. And so we can put that in right now. It turns out that if we keep, my attention will shift sometimes too fast. If I actually looked over here, I could actually place all that information in that here there's an interesting case in the center, and this is something you could have done at the start of the puzzle, is that if you looked at the twos, you would have placed this note with the two. If you look at the eights, you would have placed this note with the eight. And now, this is not something that's normally in my system of notes, but something that you need to be able to see, which is that with these two nines, a nine has to be in one of these three cells, and we already have a two and an eight in this group, and so that forms a triple. And this may or may not end up on the paper when I write it, but normally if I write the triple, what I'm trying to use is now this excludes two digits to these cells. And indeed, at the very start of the puzzles, could have actually been the first place you tried to make progress, although it's, it's sort of insane to make progress there to start with, that you could identify this kind of triple. And so it's, it's looking at areas that communicate outwards as, as much as anything else that's going to be uh, a useful area to, to advance in these puzzles. Here we're going to just follow this line a little farther, there's something interesting that's going to pop up. I'm trying to, to get to where it is, so I get this one, and now I get this one. And now, here's, a, here's a, something that will happen sometimes in the puzzle that you'll want to focus on. So we've now completed this row, sorry, this column of three. And I will, any time I do that, I will just read, check the progress looking up in these, these available spots. And so in this case, the, the digit I haven't written before, I could have written these three. The digit I haven't written before is a seven. And I look at all the other sevens I see as well. And coming up over here, there's a seven in one of these two spaces. And again, I don't know which, but what's useful to see is that it's not in this top column. So again, it's, it's sort of excluding, just in the same way the sixes were in columns four and six, but not in column five in these two boxes here the sevens are in row two and three and not up here. And so if you can see why that's a seven real quickly, you're going to be getting better and better at Sudoku, that you need to be able to, to track why this is a seven. And the reason is that it's not in rows two or three. Those are filled up over here, and so it's got to be in row one. And just looking up in the, the puzzle, the seven eliminates. And so it's this kind of jumping between logic that will get you progress. And here's, here's an, e an even bigger jump. Uh, I need to fill a three, eight, nine in this box. And so I'm looking at the threes, and there aren't enough, uh, there's not enough information with the threes to do something. I'm looking at this eight, and I'm also looking down. This eight points across. That means there's an eight up here, which points up. And actually, this digit is an eight. And so think yourself through why that placement can be made right now. But it's actually, if you can, if you can work your way around the puzzle so powerfully like that with what are called pointing pairs, cases where you have a particular row or column that's going to contain the digit, which therefore eliminates it in other places that you can you can really advance your skills. And this is the kind of placement, if you can get good at doing things like that, that just will let you get progress all throughout the puzzle. And you can see that from there, I'm off to the races.